just, just a second. Thank you. <coughs> now, is there anyone who's got a, a truss where we've calculated a reaction so that I can skip that step, so that I can skip that step where I calculate the reactions, I go straight to a resolution of joints and method of section. Is there anyone who's got that? If you've got that, you can just share with me via WhatsApp. I'm waiting guys. Okay, just give me a second guys. I'm just looking for a, a problem that has uh, with reactions. We believe it's from your textbook. Okay, even if it's from your textbook, I'm just looking for one problem that you can use as a to demonstrate the concept from your textbook. Just give me a second. Where are the classes here? Okay. Because if I ask you to calculate your reactions now, this is gonna be another. We're gonna waste a couple of good minutes trying to calculate the reaction. So I'm just looking for a problem that a trust that has reactions, so that we can use that trust to. Yes, I've got it. Okay, I've got it, guys. <coughs> Okay. There's a problem in your book on page uh, 123 in your textbook. It's like this. Loaded there, 10 kilonewtons. It's loaded there, 10 kilonewtons. It's got a roller support. It's got a pin support. Sorry, pin support. Then A, B, C, D, E. Then it's got another 20 kilonewtons here. Six meters. Five meters. Five meters. Five meters. Okay. Can you guys see you? Can you guys see clearly from your side? Okay. This problem is on, is on page one twenty three of your book. So the first thing you calculate reactions. So the reactions, I'm giving you the reactions now. The reaction is 38 kilonewtons here. Yeah? So you calculate those reactions and then you arrive at that reaction. The other reaction this side, because the pin support should be two reactions, so it's 12 kilonewtons. And then the roller. <coughs> No, sorry, the horizontal reaction is 20 kilonewtons. <coughs> Here are your reactions. Now, what do you do after you've calculated the reactions? So, I'm going to start off with method of section. Okay, 
method of section. So the name method of section. You section your your what your your truss. You you section your truss. So depending on which members you are calculating. Okay. If for example, I ask you to calculate the internal member for C G member of force internal member here. This is C G. That means I expect you to cut the section there. Your cut, you must cut the member that you are trying or you trying to solve or to calculate the internal force in. So if you want to calculate internal force in member D E and I told you to use method of section. So you must section your, your trust there. You must cut DE. You must cut EG if I want you to calculate that. And so on and so on. Then what do you do after the cut? After the cut, you can only use the left-hand side of the truss or the right-hand side of the truss. It's up to you. But the results should be the same. Whether you use the right hand side of the truss or the left hand side of the truss, the results should be the same. Okay, now let's say for argument's sake or just for I want you to calculate this member, this member, and this member. I want you to calculate those three members using method of section, meaning I must cut the there's my cut. There's my cut. So I look at the two halves. I look at the right hand side of the cut. I look at the right left hand side of the cut and I ask myself which one has more forces? Which one is less complicated? Sorry. Which one is less complicated to use? In this case, they're all the same. So you've got a force there, you've got a force there. You've got a horizontal force there, you've got a horizontal reaction here. You've got a vertical reaction here, you've got a vertical reaction there. So for this problem, it doesn't matter which side you want to use. But if, for example, I wanted to use method of section calculating this member, Obviously, your cut was going to be there where I've got my pen. Is that right? So you've got more forces on the right-hand side. So it's more the chances of you making mistake if you use the right-hand side are high compared to someone who decided to use the, the left-hand side of the truss. So the guy who is using the left hand side of the truss is only dealing with this force and that force if he's calculating this member. But the guy who decide to cut it here, then it's fine, that's your cut. But decides to use the to use the right hand side. He's gonna use this force, this force, that force, and the chances are you're gonna get either the rotation wrong or the the what? The distance wrong. Whatever. So you try and avoid uh, the side that has got too many forces. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Okay. Now, I'm going to draw this half. There's my cut there. Okay. I'm using the left hand side. 
So this should be hidden guys, hidden or dashed lines. Okay, this is my cut. So what do you do now? Look at these forces. First thing first, you must assume that all the forces are in tension, meaning they go away from the joint. Which joint? This, this joint, that force must go away from that joint. This one must go away from the joint. And this is the joint, this one must go away from the joint. By assuming that your forces are going away from the joint, that they are going through, that means you're assuming that the members, these one, two, three members, are in tension, or we call them tie. That's the first thing that you do. That's the rule. You don't change the rule. Always do that. Okay. Then after that, then you ask yourself, which one is easy to work with in terms of now three equations, sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero, sum of forces in the x direction equal to, sum of moments around the joint must be equal to zero. Remember I said to you guys, you cannot solve structures without applying these equations. I'm going to start with a second. If I take this one, sum of forces in the horizontal direction. This force is horizontal. This one has got vertical and horizontal. This one is horizontal. So if you do that, that means you are including this and that and that in one equation because you use sum of horizontal. That means you can't do that. Look at the, the equation that is going to give you the least unknowns. Meaning, one unknown in one equation. If you cannot do it, then you can't do it. There's nothing you can do. Maybe you need to use simultaneous equation to solve that. But I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there. Okay, cool. Now, so... If I use sum of verticals on this equation, this does not have a vertical component. This does not have a vertical component. This force has got a vertical component. So that means I will have one unknown in one equation, meaning I will be able to, to solve that. Okay, this force here we call FCD. This force is FCD, force CD, CD. This force here is called FCG. This one is FHG or GH, it doesn't matter. FG or GH. Now, by using sum of verticals, I will be able to calculate F. CG, which is this force. Sum of forces in the vertical direction equal to zero. That's the equation that I'm using. So, therefore, vertical, 12 is vertical going up. I always show the directions, guys, there. 10 is vertical going down. What is this angle? This angle is 10, second function, uh, 6 over 5. That's the angle. What is that angle? Can someone tell me what's that angle, please, first? Are you getting fifty comma one nine? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, that's the angle. So, to work out this is the angle we're referring to. Always work with the angle from the horizontal. There's my horizontal there. 
the angle is from there to the horizontal. I can't work with this angle. If I work with this angle, I'm going to complicate this, this whole thing. Okay, cool. So to work out the vertical component of CD, I'm going to say F C G sine of this angle. I'm going to call it theta sine of 50,19. Do I have vertical forces on the left hand side of the truss? Not on the right because we're only focusing on the right and that force, sorry, is going down. So do I have vertical forces on the left hand side of that cut? No. Then I've worked out some of vertical, but on which side of the truss? On the left hand side side of the truss considering the left hand side this must this is going to be equal to zero i said to you that that day i always make i'm not worried about the negative is going down or the positive is going up so i always make my unknown i make sure that my unknown is positive so my unknown is, I make it positive and it's going down. That one must be positive as well. And this one must be negative. So what is FCG? That is sine 50.19. 0, 0.77 FCG. Add these two, minus 2 equals to zero. Zero comma seven seven F G is equal to two. Zero comma seven will go and divide F C G is equal to two all over zero comma seven seven. And that gives me is 2,6 kilonewtons. <clears throat> That's an internal force in that member as a result of the external applied forces. So the question is now, is this force in tension or compression? The magnitude, I've got the magnitude, but I don't know the nature of the force. Is this force in compression or tension? I assumed there that the force is in tension. And I'm getting a positive answer. Take that one, it becomes positive. Um, that means my assumption is correct. So what was my assumption? My assumption was that the force is in tension. Therefore, indeed, it is in tension. Any questions? Okay. No questions? Now, let's go to, I've solved this one. Let's go to either that one or this one. Okay. Look at the line of action. This force is going through G. This force is going through G. Can you see there? So if I am taking moments about this point, I am eliminating these two forces, so I'll be left with that force as my unknown. So, you are allowed to take a moment about the point that is on the other side of the cut. You are allowed to take moments about that point, but you are not allowed to, to use forces that are on the other side of the cut. So now I am taking moments about this point. By doing that, I'm eliminating these two forces. Then I'll be able to solve that force. So, sum of moments at G must be equal to zero. I am using this equation now. 
so G then I've got F C D times what is the perpendicular distance there is six meters perpendicular distance from that force to to that point because the line of action for that force is going there then the perpendicular distance is that distance then six and if you look at the arrow the arrow we are rotate if you move you pull that force is gonna rotate it in this direction about this point it's gonna rotate it in this direction so that's the rotation any questions there okay cool and I come to this 10 kilonewtons 10 times what is the distance from there to there it's 5 that is the perpendicular distance 5 meters times 5 and is rotating in this direction I always show those I always show this direction is that still there guys Stello. Stello. Can anyone see? Can anyone hear me, guys? Yes. Sir. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. yes sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. I was worried about you. Yeah. Okay. No, that's cool. Carry on. Now, I'm done with ten. Now, let me go to twelve. It's twelve times. The perpendicular distance from 12 to where I am taking moments is 10. And 12, if you look at the arrow for 12, is rotating that point G in this direction. Then there's 20. 20, if you look at 20, it's going through the point G. Same as what? Same as this force. So we ignore 20. Do we have any other forces now that we have? If you had a force there, you will consider it, whether it's vertical or it's horizontal, you will consider it. Consider all the forces on the left hand side. Now, that must be equal to zero. If we don't have other forces. I always make the unknown positive, therefore this one is going to be negative and this one is going to be positive. Then what is 6FCD plus 70 equals to 0? Six 6FCG, is it, is it CD, CD, sorry. Is equal to minus 70 FCD minus 70 divided by 6. So already you can see there that you are getting a negative answer. Already is telling you that my assumed direction is incorrect. FCD is equal to 11,67 kilonewtons and is in compression. Why am I saying is in compression? I assumed there that it is in tension. I am getting a negative answer here. That means my assumption is incorrect. But you, do you write the negative answer there? No. You write the what? The right so in other words, this direction is not going there. It's going the opposite direction. So if you like, you can come and change it here now after you've got the right direction. You can come and change it here. That's the arrow. Going not that direction. It's going to the left. It's compressing the joint. This is the joint C. So the arrow is going this direction. Not the other direction. So, I've solved this, I've solved that. I'm left with this one. With this one, it's up to you how you want to solve it. You can solve it 
by taking moments about C, then if you take moments about C, you eliminating these two, which is great because you don't want to use this force because what if this for you got this force wrong? What if you got this force wrong and you're gonna be using it now to to get the other force? That means you're using the wrong results to get another result so everything is wrong so it's better to just take moments about that eliminate these two forces then your only unknown will be that force then in that case now you will be able to to calculate fgh so i want you to write it down I hope you've got a piece of paper I want you to write it down sum of moments like this now you're going to say sum of moments at C equal to 0 I'm not going to write it down I want you to write it down sum of moments at C equal to 0 now FGH this is you writing now. Remember, we're taking moments about this point, so the perpendicular distance from this force to there to there is 6. FGH times 6, which is similar to this, but the rotation is going in the anti-clockwise rotation. Yes. And then you're taking a moment about C. Therefore, this force 10 is going through point C. So you can include it. It's out. Now I've got to, I'll go to 12. 12 times 5 and it's rotating it in which direction? In the clockwise direction, if you look at 12. Pushing 12. That point is going to rotate in the clockwise direction. So it's 12 times 5 going clockwise. Then I'm going to this 20 kilonewtons. 20 times 6. Is rotating it in which direction? In the clockwise direction. Clockwise, thank you clockwise direction do we have other forces no therefore this must be equal to zero remember i i like to make my unknown positive therefore the, whatever that is going in the same direction as the unknown is going to be positive opposite direction negative so please solve the problem You've got, you've got two minutes. Thirty, sir. Okay, okay. Let's wait from other guys. But your answer is incomplete, yeah. That answer is not uh, is, uh, is not acceptable. The answer is complete now. But it's incomplete because you're not telling me the units. <laughs> Okay, next, anyone else? Who's got a different answer?
Are you guys happy? So, in other words, I'm confirming that your answer is correct. The key, guys, here. This is the key, guys. The key. This is the key. Once you don't apply those equations, you just do stuff. Then, remember, you've lost it. That's the key. Okay, now, now I'm thinking now, you know how to, you know the concept now, still fresh in your mind, so uh, Zara or Stella or whoever now is going to say, okay, now interesting, this is interesting, so Zara is going to take this structure now, and then he's going to cut it here, and try and see if he can solve this problem, these ones. That Zara now at home, and he's going to decide, or else, before Zara does that, he's going to take the same cut, but considering the right hand side of the structure, and see if he's going to get the same results. If he's going to get the same results, the same results, and the 30, of which, if you are correct, I would I would love to if you if you guys can see that I can do that. Take the same cut but considering the right hand side now and see if you're going to get the the same result. It should be should be the same results to the T. If you unless you've made a mistake. Whether you're coming from the left or coming from the right, you should get the same results. Okay. After that, after you've done that, now you're practicing with this one. You cut it there, check, use the left hand side and use the right hand side and see if you're getting the concept right before you can attempt the tutorial questions. Okay, on that note, I am going to give you the answers for this, this, and this but using resolution of joints the answers I'll be using the resolution of joints so you are going to calculate those numbers but using method of section we should get the same the same answer are you happy guys now Resolution of joints. So meaning you take each joint here, guys. Each joint. For instance, if I want to solve this member, so I must take joint A. So what is joint A? You've got a member there. You've got a member there. You've got a vertical reaction of 12. You've got a horizontal reaction of, sorry, 20. This force is F A B. This one is F A H. Okay. Here, yeah, guys, there is no rule that you must make the, you must make your forces, uh, they must make these forces, uh, in, in, there must be intention or math, there must be, it's up to you. You can assume this one is intention and this one is in compression, it doesn't matter. Are you happy, are you okay with that? It doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Now, what do you then do here? Sorry, I wish I had a... Uh, uh, a pencil. Oh, no. I don't 
don't have a pencil guys okay. let me assume this one this one I'm just assuming any direction I'm assuming this one is in compression I'm this one is in compression, this member is in compression, but that one is in tension. That is my assumption. If I am getting a negative answer, that means my assumption is incorrect. Then I will remove that direction and show the right direction. Okay? So, again, So, if I say here, luckily for this one, you've got only the horizontal force and the vertical force. You don't have fancy, the fancy don't do it. Okay, fine. What are you saying there? You're going to say, okay, fine. Let me use sum of horizontal. Sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero. Therefore, force 20 kilonewton going this direction. According to my sum assumption, F A H is going this direction. This must be equal to zero. Those are the only horizontal forces I have there. So I always make the, the unknown positive. Therefore, this one is going to be positive because they're going in the same direction. So, so FAH plus 20 equal to 0. Therefore, FAH AH is equal to minus 20. 20 kilonewtons and it is not in compression. Why? Because I'm getting a, a negative answer there. Is that right guys? It is in tension. FAH is not in compression. FAH is in tension because this is my working and I'm getting here a what? A, 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 a negative answer that negative answer is telling me that that force is not in compression so I must change it there and then then I show tension then I go to this one sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero I'm, I'm solving this now a F A B. Therefore, F A B that is going up according to my assumption. 12 kilonewton that is going up in my assumption is equal to zero. This one is not playing part in this equation because it's horizontal and that one is horizontal. Therefore, if I say plus, this must be plus. Then F A B is equal to 12 kilonewton but not in tension it is in compression because i've got a negative answer there is that right if you take this to that side of the equal sign it becomes negative let me just do that because i want to clarify something fab is equal to minus 12 then fa what is that telling me is equal to 12 kilonewton but in compression i want to yes look here that's why I'm doing this. I'm getting FAB negative, but I'm saying it's in compression. Look here. I'm getting FAH negative, but I'm saying it's in tension. Can you see now, if you don't understand what you're doing, you can confuse yourself to a point where you are frustrated, you don't know, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That is me, Gengo. Mazomba doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> you understand? Okay, cool. Yeah? Guys, there is no, there is, there is nothing, there is no such a rule, or there is nothing saying tension is negative, or compression is positive, or the other way around. The rule here, if you've got a negative answer, that means the assumption that you've made on there is incorrect. The correct assumption is the opposite of that. So in this case, I assumed here that it is in compression, I got a negative answer, then that means it's intention. I assumed here it is intention, I got a negative answer, that means it is in compression. So I changed that direction to compression straight away. It's compressing the joint.
is compression. Now, watch this now. I want to go to this joint. Sorry. I want to go to this joint. Joint B. I want to go to that joint. Th this joint, I already know this member. And I must mention to you, before I go there, if, I, if you say a member is in tension, if you say a member is in tension, that means, for example, this joint is pulling away from that joint, and it's pulling away from that joint. This is tension. It's pulling away from this joint, and it's pulling away from this joint. That's a tension member. If a member you say is in compression, that means it's going, compressing this joint and it's compressing this joint. So this is compression. <coughs> so here we worked out member AB. <coughs> we said member AB, where's AB? Where's AB? Sorry. <coughs> is it AB? AB, where's AB? There. We said AB is in compression. That means it's compressing and it's compressing here. <coughs> so, in other words, if you're taking now joint B, there's that member there. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, this is joint B. There's that member AB there, 12 kilonewtons. It's compressing there. That is not an assumption. That is as a result of what you've done in joint A. You've worked out member AB to be in compression. So it's compressing joint B and it's compressing joint A. Those are the internal forces in that member. So, what do you then do? Then, what about these two? Remember this force, this angle, guys, we worked it out. I think it's the same because the dimension is uh, is 5 and it's, yeah. That that one, we worked it out as 50, 50, 190 degrees. You can work it out again if you like. Okay. This one is F. BH. This one is FBC. Guys, you can assume any direction here for these two members. You can assume any direction. I can assume this. I can assume that. It doesn't matter. This arrow, sorry. So I'm assuming this one is in compression and this one, they both compression. Doesn't matter. Or you can assume anything. You can assume compression tension or tension compression or tension tension. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, I've got this. I don't have this. I don't have that. If I say sum of horizontal, I'm including in that equation this because it's got a horizontal component and the vertical component and this. I'm, in, I'm including these two in one equation. So can I solve two unknowns in one equation? No, I can't do that. So the best one to start with is sum of forces in the vertical direction because this one has got a vertical component. This one is vertical, but I know the magnitude already from joint A. So sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero. Then 12 going up, FBH sine of 50,19 is going up because the, I assume it is in compression. This must be equal to zero. So if I say this is positive, this must be positive, 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 because they both going up. And then FBH. Plus, what is that? 
sine 50.19 is it 0 comma 7 7 Oh wait, sorry, I've forgotten. Where's twelve? Sorry, sorry, guys, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, oh yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. I've got this. Sorry, sorry. Zero comma seven seven. Then I've got twelve. This twelve plus zero comma seven seven pH. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. It's twelve and zero comma seven seven pH. So. If you take 12 to that side of the equal sign, it's going to be negative, and you divide by 0, 0,77 pH. Therefore, F pH is equal to negative 12 all over 0, 0,77. I've skipped one step here. doesn't matter. You know that step, but it's the same step. F pH is 0, 0,77, then there's 12. So this is telling me that already my assumption is wrong. The assumption that this force is in tension is in compression is wrong. This force is in tension. That already is telling me that. So 12 divided by 0, 0,77 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, So the direction, this direction is wrong. The right direction is going away. It's important that you change it after you've got the right direction. Because remember now, we're going to use this force to calculate this one. Then if we got the wrong, if we leave that direction there, which is wrong, and we calculate this one, then our answer, our, problem, our solution is going to be wrong. So this is 12, 15,58, but in tension. This one we don't know. This one we know. Now I'm going to use sum of forces in the x direction equal to 0. Therefore, so let me just write below that because of the. Oh, let me write there. Therefore, 15,58 cos of 50,19 going this direction. Which force is that? Is this force? We've calculated there that this force here is 15,58 in tension. And if you resolve that, then it's going to do that. So the arrow will still go the opposite direction. Okay? Then I've got FBC going this direction equal to zero. Positive minus. FBC is equal to take this to that side of the equal sign. 15.58 is going to be positive. Cos of 50.19. I'm tired now, guys. It's 9,97. Am I right? And it is positive because if you take this that side of the equal sign is positive. What is positive telling me? It's not telling me that that is it's not positive. It's not telling me that compression is positive. It's just telling me that my assumption that this was compression is indeed correct. Then you move to the next choice. Then you move to the next choice. If I ask you to solve a truss using don't using what you call it using a, a resolution of showing the whole truss that means I don't know what I'm doing because it's gonna be repeating the same thing ten times what am I going to achieve by ask by saying you must repeat the same thing ten times if I don't know what I'm doing then I will ask you to do that but if you can prove to me that you can solve one joint using method of your sorry resolution of joint, and you can solve at one member or two members using method of section. I'm happy. That means you know the concept.
I think so already you know already you know that that member there is in what is in tension this one is in compression this one is in compression and so on and so on and so on guys I think that's it for for, for, for today that's it for today guys Any questions? I will I will upload this video on what on, on Teams and then uh, yeah go through this stuff go through the stuff and then if you have any problems from what we have done so far then you can ask questions yes you see am I yes you see you can see uh, thank you so much that was very informative. Um, so I wanted to ask if you can't you provide just one more example? Maybe we can do it, and then you can provide solutions, or we have another. Especially the method of sections cut to the left hand side or to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I do. I do mind. <laughs> I do mind. First attempt the the what? First attempt the the one that we're doing today if you have problems then feel free to to ask me you understand then even if you are you you what you now using the you're doing the tutorial questions if you are stuck feel free to ask me to be honest with you i personally don't be i personally don't believe in doing stuff all the time i'm the one who's doing the stuff you rather do the work then you ask questions that's how I like to approach my, my, my questions. Because at the end of the day, you're going to end up explaining, explaining, and students on the other side, they're saying, yes, that was good, wow, this guy is good, and so on and so on. But at the end, at the end of the day, until you start doing the what? The stuff yourself. Until you start to do these things yourself, you will never get it right. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, I hope... You accept my 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 what? My, my what do you call this? Thing? There's something that I'm looking for. I hope you you happy with my answer. Yes, I will I will do it if the majority of the class is still struggling. But rather you attempt it yourself, and then if you have problems, I don't know whether I gave you this problem. Did you? Did you? This is from your book, actually. There's a, there's a glare now. Let me just switch off this and see if it's going to work. And then, okay. Okay. This is from your book. Guys, you can combine the method. You can use method of session, you can use resolution of joints. That's another, those are the those are the uh, what the tutorial questions from your book. I will help you guys, but only if you need help. For the guys that do not need help, that are sitting not doing anything, I don't want to to force them into this because they don't want the module. So the only students that I'm going to help are the ones that are showing interest in what in understanding the module, in passing the module. Which is, which are those guys? Those are the guys that are doing the work and they are struggling. I want to help those guys that are struggling. The guys that are not struggling, they're not doing anything for some reasons that I don't know. I'm not going to help them because they're okay with the work. Is that right? Yeah. So that's the approach that I'm going to use. If you're struggling with my, my sister and you need help, I'll help you. But don't jump into Sorry, can we, Come again. Yeah. Can we please get the page? Page? In the book? One to six. Yes. You lazy to even okay. look for a page. You lazy to even look for the page now. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's bad. You know it's bad. It's very bad. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much guys I hope you enjoyed today's session yeah? thank you
Cheers, guys. Thank you, sir. Bye. Shop, shop, guys. Thank Cheers. you, sir. Bye. Sure, guys. Sure, bye.